guys, it's Hannah, and today I am here with a very special author guest, Mary E. Pearson, the author of The Remnant Chronicles, and we're here in celebration of her newest book, The Beauty of Darkness, the last book in The Remnant Chronicles, the finale of the series. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, thank you for having me, Hannah. Yeah, of course. Do you want to start off by telling us a little bit about what The Remnant Chronicles are about? I, I can, and I'm so glad that you asked what the Remnant Chronicles are about and not this book. <laughs> no I spoilers. Can't tell you. The general premise is it starts out uh, with the Kiss of Deception, and it is um, Leah's wedding day, and she's about to be married to a prince she has never met. And she decides this is not the life for her, so at the last minute she bolts. And uh, she takes off for this little fishing village called Terabin, and there she begins this new life with her best friend. Uh, working as a barmaid in an inn. So, it, you know, it's a very different life for her, but she loves it. Uh, but in the meantime, the prince that she jilted takes off looking for her because he's ticked. <laughs> and he um, he's not just ticked because she left him at the altar, but he's also um, angry because she had the courage to do what he wanted to do in the first place. He takes off looking for her, and at the same time, an assassin from a third kingdom takes off looking for her to kill her because his kingdom wants to make sure that there are no second chances for this alliance to happen. So, as it would ha ha happen, um, both of these young men arrive in the village at the same time. They find her, and she ends up waiting on them in the tavern. And over time, she begins falling in love with one of them. But she doesn't know that one is the prince and one is the assassin set to kill her. And neither does the reader know. So uh, you have to kind of figure out, is she falling in love with the prince or is she falling in love with the assassin? Uh, but, you know, that's kind of the, the surface um, deception that's going on. Deception is in the title. Uh, but there's deception that goes in, in layers throughout the entire story. Um, the histories of this world, the remnant, the remnant world, are kind of woven throughout the, um, all three books and they contradict each other. So you're always trying to figure out what is the real history of this world? What is the truth? Uh, so it's kind of, um, in some ways, like a little mystery of unraveling. And I lay clues through every single book. Um, and in the last book, The Beauty of Darkness, I, I lay out more clues. <laughs> but I don't come right out and say, you know, what the real truth is. But a lot of readers have figured it out already. So one of my favorite parts of the series is the fact that there's so much world building mm -hmm. and the world is so elaborate and complex. Can you talk a little bit about how um, you were able to come up with that type of world and what inspired you to do that? Well, uh, lots of things inspired it. Um, I drew from the world around us, uh, places that I visited, and but I also drew from this idea that you know there's um, civilizations that have... Um, pretty much vanished off the face of the earth, and they were advanced civilizations. And so nobody is, you know, you cannot ever count on the fact that your civilization will be around forever. We're always discovering new ones that were, you know, really quite advanced. So that was one of the ideas. And then um, just taking bits from my travels of different places that I've been, I kind of put this world together. Um, Teravin was based on, very much on two places. One is a little... Um, beach community in Northern California, and the other is a fishing, uh, I, I guess you'd call it a village in Italy. Uh, it's an island, Verano, Italy, just off the coast of Venice, and uh, there's all these little colorful houses. Oh, I have pictures. Of, it's just so lovely, and I just fell in love with it, and I knew someday I had to include that description in story. I was going to say it actually kind of did remind me of Italy because I've yeah. been there before. Oh, okay. So there you I, go. I got that feeling when oh, I was good. reading it. <laughs> For the viewers out there who want to be writers themselves, mm -hmm. can you talk a little bit about your writing process and um, what helps you, like you said that you drew inspiration from the world around you mm -hmm. and from like these vanishing or um, societies and things like mm -hmm. that, but um, what is your writing process like in coming up with these things? Well, uh, I... My my process in coming up with these things is I trust the process. You cannot expect, you know, sometimes people think that this whole little nugget comes to you whole and fully formed. And for me, it's it's very wispy, and I sort of 
try to put it together as I go. And, you know, I've heard it, the process described as taking a lump of, of clay at a time and plopping them on a table. And once all the clay is there, then you start shaping it into something beautiful. And that's kind of what it is like quite a bit. Uh, you can't expect it all to come together. And sometimes that's the beauty of writing. And the exciting part is, you think, I don't know where this is going. And then little details that you planted, bits of those clay that you plopped on the table, they, they like all of a sudden turn into something that's important. And you think, oh, wow, where did that come from? And so I think that maybe it's your subconscious working. Um, but you do just have to trust the process. And the other thing is just um, showing up for work. Uh, sometimes you were not inspired. Uh, a lot of times uh, people will say, ah, you know, they're so full of doubt, and I just say, welcome to the club, because it's just, it doesn't matter how many times you've been published, you will experience doubt, and you just have to power through it. So keep going, no matter what. I mean, through every single book, I feel that way. And I thought, you felt this way before, keep going, and I do. And there's always revision. <laughs> <laughs> there's always that hump that you have to get yes, over. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So my next question is uh, the love triangle between Caden, Rafe, and Leah. Mm -hmm. Did you have the ending for that love triangle planned out from the beginning? Did you know how it was going to end? No spoilers, of course. Um, well, first of all, what I would say is I never thought of it as a love triangle, ever. Okay. Ever. So I was going to go into my next question. Yes, I never <laughs> thought of it as a love triangle. I think that, and I talked a little bit about this on my blog tour, I think even that term is a um, creation of literature in real life. Um, people don't talk about having love triangles, and yet I think everyone has experienced one. Mm -hmm. um, if you have ever had a crush on someone and cared about someone, but it wasn't returned, they like somebody else, you probably didn't consider that a love triangle. But if you wrote it into a book, it would look like a love triangle. Okay. So, um, you know, and I think all of us have been on the giving and the receiving end of that. I had crushes in high school, and these you know, guys never paid me any mind, and uh, they had their eyes on somebody else, and um, and then there were other times where it was the other way, where they, someone was maybe pursuing me, and I had my eyes on someone else. So, never thought it, of it as a love triangle, just a love complication. That's true. So you knew who she was going to end up uh, with? From not the when I very first started okay. with either one, necessarily. Okay. I, I thought I knew... But one of the things is uh, you have to go with what, how the character, um, I, I follow the character's lead. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I, it seemed like it was going to go a certain way, uh, but I, I don't outline. Okay. And every, nothing is written in blood. I'm always open to ideas. But, yeah, I, I kind of thought I knew how it was going to go. Okay. Because I, I was going to say that, like, I feel like Leah's character especially developed really organically. Mm -hmm. And I really like that about her. And that was going to oh, be my good. other question. Good. About how, See, we were on the same wavelength. <laughs> we are. About how, um, it, whether or not you had planned it as a love triangle was going to be my next mm -hmm. question. So that makes yeah. perfect sense. Yeah. What happens is when you start writing a book, um, you, you kind of know some details about the characters. Mm -hmm. But you really haven't. Until you are actually writing, you haven't gotten inside their heads yet. And after about 50 pages, you start feeling their emotions and everything that they feel, and um, that changes everything. And, and it was the same with um, uh, Rafe and Caden. You know, as I got to know them, new things came to light. You know, I didn't see them when I started in the same way as I did when I finished. And hopefully readers felt differently about them, too, as they were going along. Yeah, I definitely did. I can speak for myself. <laughs> The Beauty of Darkness is the last book in this yes. series. Yeah. So how does it feel having this series come to a close? Because it's been a big part of your life for a while now. It has. <laughs> and, and, you know, it, it's, it's bittersweet. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm really happy that it, it, the story is complete, but it was, it's hard to let go. You know, I, I have lived in this world um, nonstop for several years now. So, you know, and I know a lot of writers experience that, you know, especially with a trilogy or, or a series because, you know, it's, it consumes a large part of your life. And you, you really do come to love all the characters. So it's like, oh, maybe I'll hang out with you a little bit longer. But no, some stories, when it's time, it's time. So now that this series has come to a close, are you planning on working on anything new that might be coming out sometime in the future? <laughs> 
<laughs> well, I hope so. Mm -hmm. I will always be working on something new, even when I intend to take like a little break. Um, you know, all you have to do is be walking down the street and you see something that kind of catches your eye. And, and that, you know, well, you're, you must be a writer. I can tell just by the way you're... I write poetry. Okay, not, well, not really I, that's, I started out with poetry. So, uh, but you see something and it kind of like catches your attention and you start thinking about it and the what ifs start rolling and pretty soon you're hooked, you know? So I will definitely be writing something. I can't say, you know, when it will um, come out, but... It will. <laughs> so those are all of the questions for the interview. Thank you so much to Mary for being here. Thank you, me. Hannah. It was great to see you here, and I'm so glad that uh, we could meet at Hickleby's tonight. Me too. So thank you. The Beauty of Darkness has just been released, so it is out now, and you should definitely go check it out. I just finished it, and it is wonderful. So do not forget to check out The Remnant Chronicles, because they are a great fantasy series. So that is it, guys, for this video. Thank you so much for watching, and again, thank you so much to Mary for being here, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!